fourth episode of things that I still don't understand even though I've been teaching chemistry for a really, really long time is what happens when white light is shown through a colorful solution. And so here I want to look at things that I understand that are going on and things that I don't understand that are going on within the system. So first of all, I have the light plugged into a Spectrovis Plus. And so we can see here that when white light is shown through this solution, this is what we see. We see that the blue and the purple, a little bit of the green and the yellow, get transmitted. Meaning that basically that light just travels directly through the solution and doesn't get absorbed or reflected or anything of that nature. But that lots of orange and red light get absorbed. So if we are going to kind of make a spectrum here, where I've got my cuvette, and I've got my blue solution, and then I'm going to shine white light through it. So white light is a combination of red, I don't have orange, but red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and we'll go with violet here. So all those colors combine to give us white light. What happens is, is that the red and the orange somehow interact with the solution, right? And so what ends up happening is, on the other side of this, we have a little bit of yellow still coming out. We have some green coming out, but we have a lot of blue we have a lot of violet. And so our eye perceives that solution that is being blue. Okay, so we would say that the red and the orange get absorbed by this. Now, traditionally, when we look at absorption, here's what we're kind of doing. Uh, usually we start with a really simple system, like a single atom with different electrons in it. And we say that the electrons will kind of move between different states. So an electron might go from a first energy level to a second energy level, and then it might go back. And in order for those changes to occur, where the electron is changing its position and how it's moving within that atom, it has to either absorb or emit light. So when it goes from a lower to a higher energy state, light comes in and it gets absorbed. And now that light is now a part of that new electron and how it's moving differently than before. And then when it changes back, it re-emits that light. And we also know that whatever gets absorbed gets re-emitted. So if this involves a UV light to get from one to two, the same wavelength and frequency of UV light would be emitted to go back from 2 to 1. So if I put in blue light to get from 2 to 3, I'm going to get blue light back when I go from 3 to 2. Okay. The second thing of what's going on here is that when we look at a solution like this, this is a copper solution, that the copper ions are surrounded by water molecules that cause a distortion. Okay. So normally, if we had a set of 3D orbitals, we would have a set of what are called degenerate orbitals, where they're all the same energy. Here's my set of 3D. But it turns out that two of these are spaced where they are further or closer to the other, all the water molecules that surround the ion in solution, and it causes the, the distortion to occur where two of the orbitals end up in a different energy than the other three. So what can then happen here is that if you have an electron, and you have the space for it to be promoted, it can absorb light and move from there to there. And it can also emit light by going back. And what we see happening is that the typically this gap is a visible light gap, meaning that if red to violet light hits these electrons, that's going to be the, the difference in energy to match that change. Okay. And then, moving out a little bit further, for molecules, we often find that molecules are more complicated than single atoms, and molecules will have uh, electronic states, just like this, but they will also have a vibrational state and a rotational state, and they have these combinations where you can have kind of a low ground state for your electronic state, but you can have various vibrational states and various rotational states, and you, so you kind of end up with these different things like this. And something that can happen is you can have an electron go from here up here and then re-emit you know maybe radio waves or microwaves and end up kind of in a, in a state here where we end up with two or multiple sequences of light being emitted right and so what's interesting about this is you might even be able to put in something like UV light but then get blue light back along with whatever microwave or radio waves are emitted through that trans set of transitions and so my question that I struggle with on this one is, how does this factor into that? 
So when I'm shining these lights through and I get red absorbed, it seems mostly clear to me that I'm not getting a situation where the red light is absorbed and then re-emitted. So in the case of the blue, I've got a lot of red and orange light being absorbed. I don't think that that red light is being re-emitted in some other direction, and that's what's causing my blue color to appear. But I don't really know how this factors into this in terms of making those different things change in a way where I can have another color light that I'm not seeing be re-emitted. So in other words, let's get into the specifics of this one. So when I'm seeing red light being absorbed, and I'm seeing this electron change from here to here, and that red light is absorbed, we would often expect that that red light would then be re-emitted as the electron eventually comes back down. Now sometimes uh, some of the excited states are more stable than others, and so sometimes they last longer. And then also there's, there's examples that I know of in molecules where this occurs in, in steps. What I don't know is how those factor into this. I don't understand when the red light gets absorbed, why doesn't that red light get re-emitted, and what's the process by which that electron returns to this lower energy state without emitting the red light. So I would assume that some kind of infrared microwave radio light is emitted as it goes from here to here. I do know that the gap between here and here can fluctuate based on how close the ligands are, if there's a different type of ligand besides the water particles. Um, and so I do know that like from the spectrochemical series that if I put chlorides instead of waters around the cation that this gap can shrink or increase and that'll change what type of light is absorbed. Okay. But, I, but I struggle with how do I make a full connection between you know, this idea of vibrational and rotational states being accessible within this particular set. Now I have seen before, and I haven't been able to confirm or deny this, that this is not the complete picture of why a transitional metal cation is colorful when it has a ligand attached to it. So for instance, copper two is blue, uh, usually in solution, or like copper two sulfate is a blue ion when it's hydrated, uh, it turns white when that water gets removed. Um, but I have heard that there's more to the story as to why this color, why this ends up being blue uh, when we look at it, more so than just this d orbital ligand field splitting, crystal field splitting, whatever it's called, uh, kind of concept. And so something that I would like to know a little more of is in your daily life, how does this whole process work where you see color, uh, where something's getting absorbed and then not readmitted, and, and how that blend kind of comes off in a way where your eye can then perceive it and go, oh, I'm seeing blue light. How can you take white light and then remove part? What, what is that turning into exactly? And then also, I would really like some specifics on the solution idea of like when I shine light through a solution. So like if I'm shining white light through here, what can I look for off to the side to confirm what's going on as that electron transitions back down to a lower excited state or to the ground state? So could I look for an infrared light wave that's, that's kind of out here that would be key to this transition um, or microwave? And what is that transition based upon so that I can kind of give a good explanation? So I feel like I have a solid understanding of kind of how the light causes the electronic transitions to occur, except in this particular case, I struggle. And students in particular struggle with this idea a ton because they don't really know what light is. Uh, they don't know what these lines represent. There's a lot of things that are kind of missing from there. And the one thing that I feel inadequately prepared to describe is what happens to the red light once it gets absorbed. And so I feel like if I understood that better, then I could give a better answer to students and they would have a complete picture. Maybe it wouldn't be easy, but they would at least have the full idea of what's going on. So here's a nice example of this. Uh, this right here is tonic water, and it's a chemical in it called quinine. And when I bring a black light next to it, you can see that it gives off blue light, which is different than the purple that's coming off of this. So the UV light itself is hitting this, and it's causing a change in the electrons where these are coming back in multiple stages, and one of them gives off the blue light. So I put UV light in, but I get other types of light back. 
that's called fluorescence or phosphorescence if it's delayed. And here's a set of other chemicals, and you can see the quinine's on the far left there. So there's the quinine blue color, and we've got these other ones. Um, or glow-in-the-dark strip is another example of that. So glow-in-the-dark strip, I can take this here, and when I bring the UV light near it, it ends up giving back green light where I put UV light in. And then also just a whole bunch of different types of money where you can see that as I bring that closer, there's a few of them, like this one right here, where I put UV light in and I get some kind of visible light back. So I want to contrast that with, here's a blue solution, when I put the visible light in, what's happening here that's causing the red light to never come back? What is it turned into and why is it turned into that particular type of light?